Hello and welcome to this next video all about the three G's, okay? Now you're thinking, three G's, what the heck is that? Is that some sort of like old fashioned phone system? You know, three G, four G, five G even? Um, no, the three G's is simply three variations of the G chord, okay? Now this is important to understand because many students that I teach, when I show them a G chord, um, you know, I say to them in another song, let's play this G, and they go, well, that's not the G you taught me before, okay? Because there's variations of a G. Um, and you'll notice in certain genres of music, in certain songs, they'll use one of the three Gs, okay? So what are the three Gs? So I'm going to talk you through the three Gs, uh, and then I'm going to play all of them back to back so you can hear the difference between them, and I'll discuss some of the uses for the three Gs, okay? Um, and I'll try and stop saying three G, okay? Uh, so first G, okay, first G, this is the one that's a bog standard, everybody learns this at the beginner stage, okay? Now this is second finger on the third fret of the low E string, first finger on the second fret of the uh, A string, open on the D, open on the G, open on the B, and then either your third or your fourth finger on the third fret of the high E string. I'm going to go with the third finger because that's probably the most common I've seen. Okay, lovely sounding chord, major tonality, sounds great. Uh, that's G number one, okay, so that's the, that's the first G. That's the G you'll probably learn at the beginner stage, that's the first G you've ever encountered, and you're probably thinking, Rich, that's the only G I know, mate. That's fine, okay? They've probably got you this far without worrying about any of the other Gs. However, there are some variations of the G, okay? Not talking about inversions and things like that because that's another step too far. Um, I'm just talking about the basic Gs that you can do in the open position that have a lot of, um, a lot of miles in them, yeah? You can, you, you can apply them to different styles and different, you know, different genres and it just works really well, okay? Uh, and that knowledge and that sort of um, you know, understanding of when I should use which G uh, is really helpful. So that was G number one, okay? Let's go to 2G, okay? G number two. Uh, G number two then, so G number two is this one here, okay, so it's exactly the same as G number one, okay, which was like that, and then G number two, we're going to shuffle the third finger up onto the B string fret three, and put my little finger now, the fourth finger down on fret three of the high E string, okay, now from the low string to the high string, that's finger two on fret three again, finger one on fret two of the A, okay, open on the D, open on the G, finger three, fret three of the B string, and finger four, fret three of the high E string. Okay, now let's have a listen to this one, so. Now that's G number two, okay, that's two G. So we've had one G, two G, and I said I'll try not to say it so much, but here's the three G, okay? Now, the three G is actually even easier than all of those, okay? And so technically maybe it should have been the one we learned first of all, okay, but everyone seems to come to that one first. Uh, this one, I feel, is used more um, by artists such as Ed Sheeran, uh, maybe lots more in pop songs, things like that, okay? Um, so let's have a look at G number three. So G number three is actually a lot easier because there's less fingers, okay? However, you have to do a mute with the second finger. Now, you put your second finger on the third fret of the low E string like we did before. Now, your second finger now is also acting as a mute of the A string, okay? So it's keeping that A string muted. So we've got the second finger on the third fret of the low E string. Then we've got open on the D, open on the G, open on the B, and then my third finger goes on the third fret of the high E string. Let's listen to this one. So this is G number three. Okay, again, sounds just like the other two. Um, now you're probably thinking, well, this is, this is great, Rich, but what's the application for this? And you know, what's the point of this video? So what I'm trying to say is, be aware of these three Gs, okay? Because these three Gs will come up in lots of music and lots of different songs. Um, and if you can really train your ear, which I've managed to do, when you hear a song, sometimes you can hear whether it's G1, G2, or G3, okay? And this is important um, because you then get the right sort of sound. You know, for instance, like, um, as it Take It Easy by the Eagles, Lion Eyes by the Eagles, lots of these country songs, uh, they tend to use G, this G here. So this one with the... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so G number one, that was, that was number one G, so. Now the reason why they use that is it's got more of an open sound, okay, and it just works really well with country, especially on acoustic guitar, that sound works really, really well. Okay, now, someone like Slash, or uh, someone you know, more of a rock guitar player, would probably prefer to use G number three, okay? Now, G number three is simply the same as G number one, but it has the extra finger down on the third fret of the B string, okay? Now, by adding that extra finger, all you're doing is you're thinking, well, I'm adding, it can't be G anymore because I've added an extra note, okay? And you'd be wrong, because it is still a G, because it still has all of the notes from a G chord, okay? All we've done is added an extra D note to the chord, all right? That's on the third fret of the B string. We've added an extra D note, which is already in the chord of G anyway. Remember, the notes in the chord of G is G, B, and D, um, and it's already in there, so we're just adding, we're doubling up, okay? So you might think this will give it more of a sort of a thicker, 
um, you know, more sort of power to it, which it does. So have a listen to this one. So, okay. Now the other one, the last one, G number three, which we said was the one which is more sort of, again, open, I suppose. Um, but it's now taken out the, um, the third of the chord on the B here. So taking out the um, first finger on the second fret of the A string, you're removing that from the chord and you're muting the A string, okay? So you're just you're definitely hearing the two root notes, polar opposites, the two E strings, okay? And then you're hearing all the uh, open strings as well, okay? So listen to that. So okay, there is a difference. Listen. So here's all here's all three back to back, okay? So G number one, G number two, G number three. Okay. There is a difference. Okay. Now the way to um, you know to apply these is just to just to have a go. Yeah. Just try and um, you know, just try and use them in different scenarios and see which one you think you prefer the best. In country music, I, I, I tend to use that one. You know, I prefer that, that G, so I prefer you know G number one. Uh, when I'm playing rock, and majority of the time when I'm playing rock and blues, I prefer G number two. Um, you know, and then when I'm playing stuff from Ed Sheeran and things like that, I prefer G number three. So you can see it's down to you. You know, and you know when you want to apply them, and just having an awareness of them, I think is really important. Um, so it's just. This video is all about all the three G's, okay? So the three G's that are available to you. We haven't even talked about different fingers that you can use for the you know, shapes of the G, depending on what chords are coming up next, but that's another video entirely. But I just want to do this really important video on the three G's. I hope you enjoyed that, guys, and I'll see you again soon.